Hi friends, I thought I'd do a follow-up video on the pregnancy testing video that we have and, and how we interpret the test results. I will tell you up front, I was kind of disappointed in our test results this year. Our test results come out better than what we anticipated this year. And actually, in, in realization, they actually turned out worse than, than what most folks would think that that's better, but uh, for us, it's not as good. And we'll take a look at a couple of the animals. I got my cheat sheets here so I can have the numbers and the facts for you. In the video that we did before, we took blood samples out of the cows on a Sunday. We shipped those test results off to the lab on Monday morning and we had the results back by Thursday afternoon via email. Those test results, it's an ELISA test, what they're looking for in that test. They're measuring the presence of PSPB, pregnancy-specific protein B. The test is 99.9% .9 accurate. We've double-checked them on many occasions and they've never been wrong. Our cow herd this year, I guess what we should, what I should back up a little bit. Our targeted goal whenever we're doing our pregnancy results is the cow herd we like to have 10 to 15 percent open and the long yearling heifers that we breed we like to have them 15 to 20 percent open the reason being for that is we're pressing the cattle a little bit hard on their feed and their feed quality throughout the summertime and that reflects back through on what the fertility like is going to be like into the herd and it helps with the efficiency of the cows that aren't able to to do it on the rougher type forages, they'll typically be open, or it actually comes back on genetic, specific genetic lines. We'll talk a little bit more about that here in a bit. The results that we got back on the cow herd, the average on, across with the, the brood cows and the yearling heifers was 7.5% open cattle. That really isn't that's that's a lower number than what I'd like to see. I like to see, like I said before, I like to see a number between 10 and 15 percent open. The heifers was 15 percent open, and the cows was three percent open. And I, what it, what had happened? The reason that um, that we got so many bred this year we didn't have a higher percentage of open cattle is is the way we manage our grasses what we did whenever it come around the breeding season we stopped grazing the first cutting grass and that would have been third week in July and we come back into what we call the second separate second cutting grass or the second graze and we give them a little better quality forage and looking back on it maybe i should have stuck with the first cutting because we really didn't finish grazing our first graze across the farm until late august so that's the main reason that we had a low percentage of open cows and you say well russ that's great to have so many open cow or so many cows that got pregnant well it's not really improving the genetics in the herd by having so many open cows because i want to call cows the inability to be efficient grazers and Having so many, we might have had a couple that got bred that probably shouldn't have been bred and they should have been called out of the herd and we won't know that. So next year we'll, we'll adjust our grazing and, and do things a little differently. Let's see if we can, we've already called cows. The one, partic one cow I did want to talk about, she leads back to one of our original cows in our herd. She was a flush cow when we bought her. She has, I don't know, 50 or 60 offspring this flush cow and at the time that we purchased her we thought that she was a great hey blueberry we thought that she was a great cow and it was perfect for what we needed and, and truth be told she really she really didn't have the genetics we needed she had great carcass quality but the fertility in that particular line of cattle wasn't good and we had guess we had four daughters out of her and her and and they only stay in the herd they only stayed in the herd for a very short period of time and all the genetics except for this one last one she was born in 2000 uh, June 26 2011 so that would have made her last year eight years old 
The reason that she didn't breed back is she she was what we call in the, the cattle industry, she was really milky. And what she'd do is she put all her heart and soul into taking care of that calf and, and giving it as much milk as possible. And in doing that, it drew her body condition down to where she couldn't breed back. So we've called her, she went to the sale barn. I'm glad to see her gone. Because that, that particular line, like I said, they are very milky cows. We had a full sister to her here. She left the cow herd a long, long, long time ago. She was a really large framed animal. She was a size seven frame score and she weighed 1,926 pounds when she went to the sale barns. You know, I'm kind of glad to see those, those cows go. We like our smaller cows now. You've seen Blueberry come along there. She's probably what I consider the, the ideal cow. And, I wish I had more of her and we're trying to breed and we're, we're starting to get some some like that. But I wanted to go through here and walk through the cow herd and, and see if we could find uh, a couple of these heifers that didn't breed as yearlings. We're looking for 23 white and 20 yellow. I'll put my cheat sheet up here and we'll see if we can find them. Let's see if we can find 23 white and 20 yellow. Hopefully I don't forget them by the time we find them. And kind of look at them. I know the 20, the 20 yellow one, I can, I know the reason that she didn't breed back and we're gonna explain that as soon as we can find her. Collie dogs that are out there catching mice. I've seen them catch seven mice already. They're having a blast. Here's the 23. This heifer here, that's 23 white. She's open. She's a smaller animal. She's a smaller animal and let me see here. I can't find, see any characteristics that would show and I don't know if she's been sick at all. I don't think that she's been sick at all. She just might have been a late calf and slow to come back. She, she's actually cycling now. We could breed her but we'll hold her off until next year and we'll breed her next year and she'll calve out the following year. We're looking for 20 yellow. There's a distinctive reason that she didn't breed back and it's just, it's one of those experience things and record keeping things that points out to why she did not breed back. I run into this, I've run into this in the past, if we can find her. You can see they're out here happily grazing in the snow neighbor he just texted me said we're getting five to eight inches of snow by tomorrow night so that will be fun anymore I don't check the weather much because we're prepared pretty much for any type of weather we have coming it doesn't matter I will look at the weather every, every now and again I think this is her here. Hey Buttons. Hey sweetie. What are you doing, huh? Not mustering your feed, huh? Buttons, she's a she's about a four four frame cow. She's about as big as I'd want to have care to have anything bigger than that. I do have some bigger ones in here, but at some point they're gonna go. Yes, that's this little heifer here is not bred, she's open. You can tell she's a little bit on the thin side. 
Whenever she was a calf, she had pink eye. Uh, last year we were very fortunate we didn't have any pink eye in the herd, but the year pre previous to, which that would be 2018, we had about six or seven calves that ended up with pink eye and a couple cows. And that pink eye, it's so hard on these animals. You know, they say it, I don't know if you can see it, but she's got a cloudy eye from it. She had it pretty bad. And uh, it set her back, it set her back in her, her growth. And I suspect that that's the reason she didn't breed back. And we've seen this in the past at calves that end up with pink eye, it just kind of sets them back in their growth and their growth levels. And you know, there's something wrong with their, their immune systems if they're picking up pink eye. So that's, that's the reason that she didn't breed back. I'm not sure why that 23 white didn't breed back. I suspect she was just a late calf from the year before. Um, our call, some of our calling procedures and reasons that reason why that we do pregnancy testing in the winter months. The reason, the main reason for doing the pregnancy testing is we want to get these call the cows that don't breed back. We want to get them called out of the herd as soon as possible because the winter months is the most expensive time of the year to feed your livestock. And to be quite honest with you, I don't want to feed. Um, open cows because they're not going to bring you any money other than salvage. You know, I could salvage them for beef. I don't really feel comfortable sal salvaging call cows for beef because I want my customers to have the highest quality product as possible. And that's just my opinion. Our call cows go to the sale barn. I take my lumps on it and it is what it is and that's how it's going to be. That's uh, some of our calling procedures and, and why we do pregnancy testing here on the farm. It costs us about two to three hundred bucks with the blood test. If it, we had a vet come in, it costs us close to four, four to five hundred dollars. So that's the reason we do the blood test. We've been doing it for a very long time. It's a lot less stressful on the cattle. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell to get great videos. For the subscribers that's been with us for a while, I'd like to thank you for your support. If you have any questions, comments, please don't forget to leave them in the comment section below. Till next week, we'll see you later. Have a good one.